economic, social, and cultural development, consequently leads to a concentration of power. McFarlane recognizes that this third world ideology shares Frederick List's belief in national economic independence, but he thinks it is anti-Listian in its opposition to capitalism. He also acknowledges that the national liberation doctrine is distinct from Marxism in its fundamental commitment to national identity. One might say that the national liberation revolution is national, not only in form, but also in essence. So. I think that's what gets at a very interesting thing here, where we can look at, um, as that paragraph describes, sort of third world, decolonial, Marxist Leninist uh, ideologies we see proliferate um, in in so much of the way that they're against imperialism, they're they're against being dominated. Uh, but actually underneath that, so much of it is derived from Frederick List, and there's actually very little that's maybe Marxist in actual practical implementation. Um, and then similarly, we go over to sort of the right-wing capitalist side with the East Asian economies, where we look at Taiwan and Japan and South Korea, and we say, oh, well, these are models for capitalism. These are models for, um, you know, how liberal democracies in the capitalist vein have have won the, the debate of the 20th century. Uh, but really, again, the same thing. When you look underneath into the details, you find there's many uh, Listian policies. There's there's a lot more um, state guidance, maybe less so planning. Um, and so, yeah, that's where it serves to come back to this idea that wherever we look, we find Frederick List associated with sort of what works regardless of any ideology. And in that vein, he is hugely impactful, but even so more, he's so under discussed that we need to sort of rise him up or resurrect him in a sense um, to actually have the vocabulary to push these ideas forward in, in an affirmative sense.